And welcome to Illini Drive on WPGU 1071. Today's program is brought to you by uh, University of Illinois Division of Intercollegiate Athletics. FightingIllini.com, unify, develop, inspire, achieve. All students have free tickets to the Nebraska game this coming weekend. Uh, night game, primetime, should be a lot of fun, so make sure to go check it out. Uh, like I said, I'm Nathan DeHaan, joined by Jake Hassan, Brendan Jones, Alex Aguilera on the board. It's going to be a good show today, boys. Let's let's talk about this upcoming Nebraska game. Because Illinois kind of you know has a dud game against Eastern Michigan this last week. And now, under the lights, uh, not very often that we get to see night games at Memorial Stadium, but... In comes Scott Frost, Nebraska team, and you know it's going to be a dogfight. It's it's, it's going to be interesting. Uh, opener of the Big Ten season. What are we looking forward to? I don't even know. Like, what is there? To look? I'm just scared. I don't even know what there's to look forward to. I'm just scared. I mean, you know, under the lights. I mean, just that atmosphere. That's something you don't get to see a whole lot here in Champaign. Um, I was there for that North Carolina game. That atmosphere was just definitely different, and especially as a fan too. That was. Something that was really fun. So I don't know. I think just just the atmosphere of the stadium is going to be different. I think that if there's something to look forward to, you know, it's that. Yeah, I think that's going to be really cool. Um, hopefully we have some good play to look forward to. Um, we've seen spots through these first three games where the Illini offense looks really complete. Um, so obviously they're going to have to score a lot to even, you know, compete with Nebraska, um, especially if our defense can't can uh, hold Nebraska. But, you know, I think – I think it should be a good game for students to go to. It's free, um, so show up. Your guys' lack of confidence. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, so here's here's one thing. I look at Nebraska, and I'm not sold on them being that good. I mean, I I like they looked pretty bad against South Alabama in their Week One win. You know, it's a win, but they don't look like the Nebraska Cornhuskers of this new generation of Scott Frost coming to change around everything. They lose at Colorado. 34-31, the exact same score of the Eastern Michigan game, and then they drum uh, Northern Illinois. So I th- I feel like these two teams have two very comparable first three games. A drumming of a team that they should beat, where Illinois drummed Akron and Nebraska drummed another MAC team in Northern Illinois. An unconvincing win against a bad team, the way that Illinois pulled out a win against UConn, the way that so- South Alabama challenged Nebraska on their home turf, but in Nebraska comes away with the win and then a loss that you really were expecting to be a win if you're if you were planning on turning this program around which Nebraska is also in the process of doing the comparisons go further than that both of these teams ha- average around 250 passing yards a game and around 170 rushing yards a game both defenses allow a lot of passing yards and are pretty good at defending against the run both teams score around 35 points a game and they allow around 20 points a game <laughs> So through three games, these teams seem very even. Is Nebraska that much better than Illinois? I mean, you have me thinking now. Yeah, <laughs> like, no. <laughs> now you raise some very good points now that you bring all that up. I mean, you're right. This is very comparable. And, I mean, these are two teams that are going through these phases, like the same kind of phases. Here, let's, let's start here. Let's, let's, bre- let's break it down, okay? Who's better? Adrian Martinez or Martinez. Brandon Peters? Yeah, Martinez. I would agree. Adrian, Mar- <laughs> Adrian Martinez has 70, 725 passing yards and 116 rushing yards and seven touchdowns total through three games. Does Brandon Peters have more touchdowns? Yes, but that's just that's just they're throwing it out there. Who's better on the ground? Is it Nebraska's two-headed monster of Dedrick Mills and Maurice Washington or Illinois' Reggie Corbin and Dre Brown? I think that's tougher because we haven't seen – Re- Reggie Corbin that much like That's we true. saw him like he show- definitely showed up against um, Eastern Michigan, but and then that last rush for a touchdown was right. very impressive, right? And obviously we know his history at this program. We know that he is you know one of the better running backs in the Big Ten, and he has been for a few years now. Um, but we haven't seen what he can do against the Big Ten defense this year. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure. I. I kind of want to give the hand here to Illinois just because, well, and because I've seen a lot more of Rod Smith's offense yeah. and the way that yeah. he uses rushing attacks and the way that, you know, Reggie Corbin has around the same amount of yards as Dedrick Mills um, and Maurice Washington, but Reggie Corbin also didn't play for pretty much two games. So th- that speaks volumes to how good uh, Reggie Corbin has been, you know, in the time. But, so, so right there, I you know, and I don't know enough about Nebraska to tell you whose wide receiver is better, who's got a better line or defense or whatever. But 
this game feels very comparable to me. People are kind of throwing in the towel already. The way that we started the show, it wasn't brimming with confidence or really excitement about this game. It's understandable. Illinois just lost a game against Eastern Michigan where they played with your heartstrings and they let it go and it felt like, you know what, this is Illinois football all over again. But I'm not totally sure if this is Illinois football all over again. So I'm going to ask this. Who rushes for more yards, Illinois or Nebraska? Both te- Nebraska averages 82 rushing yards allowed, and Illinois averages 79.3 rushing yards allowed. Nebraska averages going for 171 yards a game, Illinois 168 yards a game. At home under the lights, it's Illinois. I think just rushing. I think okay. Illinois too. I agree. Only thing that gives me pause is that Nebraska has a running quarterback. Something that Illinois kind of had to face in Akron, but it was somebody that wasn't sure if they were going to get the starting job. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, the the other two quarterbacks, you know, Glass ran. Glass, may, you know, showed that he had athleticism and could use his feet, but wasn't really a running quarterback. I guess, yeah, I mean, that's different. It, it, it reminds me of Colin Kaepernick used to just go off against the Packers. Right. He had he has like a he had like a three hundred passing, hundred eighty yard rushing game against them, like in like week fourteen when they, when uh, Green Bay needed to win, and that's like kind of what this reminds me of is that because Green Bay hadn't seen a running quarterback like that, and and Illinois hasn't seen a running quarterback like Adrian Martinez, and Adrian Martinez does have a lot of hype around him. I mean, they did see Adrian Martinez last year. Well, yeah, but. It, is this defense that much better than last year's? I think yes, but I'm wondering how much so. What do you mean by that much better? Okay. How, how much is that much better? So last year, Illinois, what, about like 530, 550 yards against mm-hmm. us per game. Um, this year right now, total yards allowed by Illinois per game is 407. But it's been some non-conference opponents mm-hmm. that don't have as high-profile offenses as Nebraska or the Wisconsin's and you know the teams that we're going to see later on. I'll I'll do it like this. One to five scale, five being you went from, you know, the way that the, the defense was last year to like a top tier Big Ten defense. And one being this defense didn't change at all. Give me a one to five on how much better Illinois defense got. I think two, the line I feel like is better, but the secondary, I mean, they either took a step back or they're the exact same. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... Two, one and a half, two. I mean, it's mar- marginal at best. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's a two. Like, as of right now, like, you can see the defense did get better, but, you know, it's not significant enough where we've been really sold and impressed by this defense at all. Put your coaching hat on. What do you do as the defensive coordinator to, to, to change the way that this defense looks? Because they, they're good against the run, but they're just getting cut up in the pass. I mean... It's hard because they're not really healthy in the secondary. Right. They've had so many different DBs. Um, and obviously losing Marquise Beeson, one of right, the best of recruits course. Illinois has gotten in the decade, yeah, is um, tough. Yeah, I'm not sure what, what – I don't know. If I, if I knew if I could fix it, I'd be <laughs> working for Illinois sports. So I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't even know what you go about fixing yeah. because I feel like what – I don't know. I don't even know like what makes this the line work as well as they have been so far. At least is because the secondary isn't really great, but you know other teams need to be able to mix it up. Still, they want to just go pass every time, and th- so the line is able to be there. I don't know. I because I would say like change some guys around, but like we saw that last year, where like Tony Adams and Nate Hobbs literally changed positions, and yeah. you know all these guys were moving all over the field. So I don't know. I don't know what you do. That's not my job. So, <laughs> part of sit here just, and judge what they do. <laughs> part of me. So I'm not a defensive coordinator. I I and I'm and I didn't play football growing up. So take this with as you know as much, many grains of salt as you want. But part of me wants to have our linebackers always be in a zone in the middle because of just the the, the holes and the ability that the guys have had to just be able to pass the ball over the middle and then move from within and then line up your best athletes in the corners and the DBs sort of man on the guys that they have out wide. And, you know, it's it, it's obviously not as simple as that. And you need to mix up looks and sort of give in the offense a few confusing looks and, and, and keep them on their toes. But there's got to be a way to clog up the middle and, and mm-hmm. it better. And also, or or if it's not that, it's always running cover two and making sure that you don't get beat in the long play, in the deep pass, in the you know the run that gets past the first and second line of defense. Um, I, you know, 
I don't know if it's sort of just, you know, people still getting comfortable in their positions. I mean, you talked about Tony Adams and Nate Hobbs switching positions or just, you know, people stepping up to the occasion. And speaking of stepping up to the the occasion, how does the primetime atmosphere affect this game? How does, you know, Saturday night under the lights against Nebraska to open the Big Ten season affect this game, either in a positive or negative light? I mean, I think it does it positively to an extent because I know that the Illinois players are like jacked up and they want to prove that they're, you know, they're getting better and they're becoming a team that you can rely on and the fans can get behind. But I could also see it being negative where they get too jacked up and overplay and try to press too much and then they just fall apart. So I guess I don't really have an answer. <laughs> yeah. It's wash. My answer is wash. Okay. So so you're Essentially, you're saying the prime time, although it affects it, also doesn't really change things. I mean, I guess it, it could just go either way, I think is what I'm trying to say. Like, I can see it being like something like, you know, for that opening kickoff, like it's going to be electric and it's going to be a, uh, a situation where all the fans are going to be on their feet. All the players are going to be jacked up. I mean, you're going to see guys on the sideline jumping up and down like that. Yep. And great visual. It's a radio right show. <laughs> yep. Um, but <laughs> they're going to be doing like jumping jacks. They're like trying to get people fired up. And then I, I'm just afraid that this Illinois team wants it too much and that they press themselves too hard. Okay. Okay. Any, anybody else have any opinions? Hey, dude, I don't know about this game. That's all I can say. I don't know about Alex, this game. Alex, give, give, me, give me your your level right now. <laughs> My <laughs> level? Just, just, like, sort, just sort of, you know, I understand you've been a guy that's been preaching, you know, penalties hurt this team and whatnot. Just give me sort of what you're feeling about this game and why. Because you always help ground us. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so I think one of the things I had mentioned with the EMU game was I, I felt that Brad and Peters needed to have a good game. He had an okay game. It wasn't the best. It wasn't the worst. But he definitely made some questionable passes where I was just kind of like, dude, you did not look like that. Um, I mean, and then two, same with penalties, same with the, with the secondary. You know, they just allowed guys to just run up the middle like that. They allowed free yards against penalties. I mean... It's it's stuff that we've been that I've been saying that honestly this team needs to fix and they, and we haven't seen that yet. Um, Lovey Smith has has been a guy where he's where I've, he's said it multiple times in press conferences. Hey, you know we're gonna fix this up. We're gonna fix the penalties. Well, it hasn't you know you guys haven't fixed it up quite yet. So it's you know it's it sounds repetitive. It sounds cliche, but just honestly, just the obvious issues this team's had this team has. That's what they need to fix up. I think honestly, like. You know, fixing that up is just going to do wonders for this team, but I just don't see it happening anytime soon. Okay, let's let's go around the room. I want each person to have a key for the game. So, so at the end of this whole thing, we'll have four keys to the game. Then we'll do what? Then we'll do predictions. Um, I'll go ahead and start. Um, sort of in the same vein of you saying Peters needs to have a good game, like in in against Eastern Michigan. I'm. I need Reggie Corbett to have a good game. I need, I, you know, he's sort of been this question mark. He's kind of an X factor guy against a Nebraska defense that apparently can hold teams, you know, under 85 yards rushing. Mm-hmm. I want to see Reggie Corbett come out and do what Reggie Corbin does, you know, really find ways to get to the second and third level, break off big runs, you know, consistently get the rock, show us that he can carry the majority of the load for a primarily rushing attack. And I think that's, I think that's what Illinois is going to have to do offensively. Um, at least that's one part of it, and but I think that y- if you if Reggie Corbin stalls in this game, if he's held for under you know sixty five seventy yards, then then this final score could be could be bad. Um, for context, last year against Nebraska, Reggie Corbin had nine attempts for sixty yards. So so th- there there's an instance. But one long run of twenty yards. But, so you're looking at eighty eight yeah. for forty, which is still five yards per carry. I'm. I'm but so that's where I'll stand. I, I feel pretty confident in that then because Reggie Corbin in the last game was held for 60 yards and mm-hmm. Illinois, you know, looked very weak against Nebraska. Mm-hmm. This game, if I, I, I want Reggie Corbin, if, if Reggie Corbin can have 85 plus, I think that Illinois can stay in this game because they'll get that commitment from Reggie Corbin. So I want, I want a key from everybody and then we'll do final scores. So was that that was yours? That my key uh, was Reggie so you're Corbin. Just reiterating that you want more keys. Okay. Yes. Um, my, I'm just making sure. Mine <laughs> remains the same. Just clean it up. That's it. Same same as last week. Just clean it up. Look better. I mean, the defense crumbled in that last drive that Eastern Michigan have. Can't do that. Clean it up. Pull it together. Yeah. My key of the game is consistency. Um, we've seen, especially from the offense, we've seen them like it was crazy that they scored. 
they were able to get those two touchdowns back in the fourth quarter, and even the last touchdown drive where they were fourth and long and they turned like on their own goal line, and that ended up in the in Matter Bebe touchdown. If they're able to to not do obviously do that every drive, but are able to you know do that through the second and third quarter instead of just showing up in the beginning and showing up at the end, you know if they're able to do that the whole game, um, they can they can be competitive in the Big Ten. Huge if, yep. huge if though, yep. huge if. Yep. Alex, key to the game. Key to the game. I've been preaching it. I'm going to preach it all season. Penalties. Keep the penalties to a minimum on both sides of the ball. You can't have a situation where at, in EMU, you know, you have Reggie Corbin have two nice runs, you know, up the field, and then you get brought back, you know, 10, 15 yards. Same on the defense. You can't allow these, you know, free first downs for these teams. So, I, you know, cutting that down, you know, creating some type of momentum when you do have a big play and not, you know, get called for holding or something like that or offsides, you know, I think, you know, that's just something they need to do. And I'm going to keep saying it. All right, before we take our first break, I want final scores from everybody. I'll go ahead and start, something I don't usually do. Um, I think it's I think it's 30 to 27 Nebraska wins. I think it's close. I think they both this, both these teams can score. I think two two or three times the defense has holds teams to two field goals. Um and but I think if Reggie Corbin has a phenomenal game, I think this could be an Illinois win, but I'm just not as out on this Illinois team in this game as I feel like a lot of people are. Let's hear from you guys. Nebraska wins 42 to 20. Jake I, is out. I, I am very out. Uh, I mean, they put up 54 on you last year. Like we talked about earlier, the defense has gotten just marginally better. The offense is better, and maybe they can run with them a little bit more, but I think the Nebraska defense has gotten better. So, uh, yeah, I, I think I think Adrian Martinez shines in this primetime game. I think it'll be 38-24, um, Nebraska. Yeah, I just... I mean, I know, like, I'm not a huge Nebraska fan, so I haven't watched them as much as I've watched Illinois, but seeing the holes in the Illinois secondary, seeing them not being <clears throat> able to be um, clean with the penalties, seeing them being so inconsistent on the offensive end, there's no reason to, like, have me believe in. Like, I can't, like, Nathan, like, I know you're trying to talk us into it, but there's been so many times where I'm like, yeah, I'm, I think I'm not I leaving. I, I mean, I'm not leaving. yeah, I feel that, but <laughs> I got to, I got to. I gotta lean with the more traditionally Alex uh, Alex pick and you know be a little more pessimistic. Watch so, Alex just speak, with, speaking of Alex. I swear, forty to zero. I Illinois. swear, <laughs> if you call it Illinois win. I'll leave the show right now. <laughs> it's a win win. No. <laughs> you know, I was so tempted, but now I say we lose 42 28. Um, I think this is an offense where I feel more comfortable in the sense that they can put put up points on the board. You kind of saw that we, with EMU where they kind of waited until the last minute, but. You know, they, they made a little comeback in the fourth quarter, but once again, this is a defense that also gives up a lot of points. So, you know, you know this, this Atlanta offense can score in, in bunches or inconsistently. You know, we kind of saw in the first quarter they looked well, and then they didn't really show up until the fourth quarter. So, you know, they, sh- they show potential that they can score, but, not, you know, not consistent enough. And then, too, you can't depend on this defense to, you know, hold, hold teams to a reasonable score, so... All right, so we all have Nebraska winning. Is one of those few times that I wish that I hope that we're all wrong when we come and talk again on Monday. Um, we're going to take our first break. Before we do that, this fall, WPGU needs your help to choose the best 107 alternate songs of all time. It's the WPGU 1071 Ultimate Song Battle. Is it going to be Wonderwall by Oasis, Numb by Linkin Park, High Hopes by Panic at the Disco? You get to choose. Go to WPGU.com and vote now until Friday, October 12th. Then tune in to flashback from noon to one after the vote closes and all through November to hear the songs you voted for. It's the WPGU Ultimate Song Battle only on WPGU 1071. Stick with us. We'll be right back talking a little bit about some interesting news that broke about college athletics as a whole. So stick around. And welcome back to Illini Drive on WPGU 1071. This program tonight is brought to you by Headline Music App. Finding new music on Headline Music App is as fast and easy as swiping left or right on songs you like or dislike. Be the first to discover new bands before they become the next big thing. Just download the Headline Music App now on the App Store and start swiping. So, today, there was some some news that builds off of something that we've talked about last week. Today, a New York state senator proposed a bill that would make the state the first to require colleges to pay student-athletes directly 
Shout out Senator Kevin Parker because hey, Kevin Parker, yeah, hey, he's hey, hey, he's got hey, the he's got the, the student athlete back. Um, we talked about it before. I want to I want want to open this up just like based off what we've read and what you guys have gone into on the ESPN article or reading it from other sources. Just sort of what your takeaway is from what you've seen. Well, I uh, I texted the stats department to get some numbers for us. The stats department is me. Oh yeah, and so let's. So I just looked up the biggest like the biggest earner in athletics in New York from last year, and it was Syracuse at ninety. Their revenue only was ninety one point four million in twenty eighteen. Mm. If you gave college students fifteen percent of that, and they have some eight hundred something student athletes, they'd each get seventeen thousand dollars. Okay. So what's your? Wh- that's you, it. They just get seventeen thousand dollars. Like, right, that's right. That's pretty ridiculous. You think that's way too high? I just think that that's awesome for them, and that's just like that's higher than I was expecting. That's fair. to be honest. I, like I thought it'd be a little bit lower, and I mean I have a feeling that the schools are gonna say that's way too high and try to fight against that. But I mean, good for the students. <laughs> like just get yeah. seventeen thousand dollars. Like just drop down. You're like cool, 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 cool. Yeah. <laughs> um. Illinois' uh, athletic department total revenue is uh, 115 million dollars. So I did the I I just real quickly did the math in my head, not on, definitely not on my phone. Um, and they would also be getting 17 thousand 269 dollars. Yeah, see, so like Syracuse was like a grand less than 17 thousand. I just didn't feel like saying them. I rounded up. Yeah, no, that's fine. Big math. Move. Fine. Yeah, yeah, huge I, math move. I think what's still like I don't know because with these bills, like they're obviously new. Um, so what will be interesting to see is how this affects the scholarship status of the athletes because while $17,000 is great, it's not enough to cover even a year at University of Illinois. Mm-hmm. So then you're kind of like putting these athletes in a, in a, in like a space where say they don't get a scholarship but they get paid, that's kind of worse off than having the scholarship because if the scholarship's worth $35,000 a year and then they get $17,000, like is it even worth it? So it'll be interesting to see how these bills um, incorporate the scholarship into the athlete. The proposed bill also said to pay all college athletes evenly. Right. So it's kind of that's I hate to use this word, but it's kind of communistic. It's not really like capitalism. <laughs> I mean, it's I mean, true. It. The start <laughs> the starting quarterback for Alabama, Tua Tuga Viola, definitely earns more money for Alabama than the backup guard or the you know the place kicker the other the other guys in that roster you know he's he's the ones that and and it, and it kind of understandably happens because he's the one that goes out there and slings the rock and hands mm-hmm. the ball off and sometimes keeps it himself and makes plays at the line and wins the games the place Including kicker the national championship correct the place kicker and the backup guard they contribute less i am not saying that the best way is to you know reward guys like to yeah. uh to to pay you know the the Justin Herbert and the Trevor Lawrences and the starting Justin Fields, the starting quarterbacks of these top tier programs, you know, some ridiculous amount because it still is amateur sports. It's still college sports. That's the thing that, you know, honestly, me and Alex were talking about this for a long time. I was so anti paying college athletes because mm-hmm. there was the part of me that said, this is, you know, amateurism. This is, you know, part of it. You know, you, you, you don't go to college. You're not the same way that when students go to college to earn their degree, they're preparing themselves to enter the professional world in the you know field that they're choosing to study or work in. It, very similar to how college athletes come to a program to prepare themselves for you know hopefully playing at that next level professionally. You know this isn't just football or basketball. You know this you know talk about Illinois volleyball, the best team on campus. We bring it up a lot that they're you know the best team on campus. Do they earn, deserve more money than you know Brandon Peters than Reggie Corbin because they are they're taking their teams to the Final Fours? There's so many layers to paying college athletes that it becomes such a complicated sort of thing to get into. That's and then I think that's where the argument lies. The argument against is that there's amateurism and a scholarship to uh, you know Illinois to Texas to Alabama is thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars depending on if you're in or out of state. The argument you know. For paying the athletes is college athletics makes over nine hundred million dollars a year. Mm-hmm. Illinois athletic department, a, a, you know, an athletic department that doesn't necessarily succeed at the salary sports makes one hundred fifteen million dollars a year. It's it's tough. It's it's a weird place to be uh, to try to be one the one to decide this bill. 
I, I, I don't I don't know right. what like I'm trying to propose as like the talking forum for this, right. but I, I just think that there's a lot that you need to get out there to sort of I, what what does anybody have an answer? Does anybody I, have an idea? I don't I mean obviously I don't have the the solution to this, but I do like the California bill better than I like this bill um, just because p- getting paid off of your likeness um, is like a whole different level. Like mm-hmm. when you get paid off your jersey, like that's that's you directly contributing to it. Like when when people buy a Zion Williamson jersey or like if they still made NCAA video games, w- when pe- those people, everybody would go pick Duke or everybody would go pick, you know, whoever. Like those are the, the players that are making the most money. Um, so like it kind of makes more sense for right now, like transitioning into paying student athletes. What's hard about the New York bill, and and I do believe that all these college athletes deserve to get paid, but what's hard is that I don't think that all of them make the same amount of money for the university, so is it fair for them to to all get paid equally? So the wording in the bill is that it would, quote, allow student athletes to receive compensation, including for the use of a student's name, image, or likeness, allows student athletes to seek professional representation, requires colleges to establish an injured athlete fund to provide compensation to athletes I like for career yeah, ending or long term injuries. I like that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I, I and I don't know the wording and I haven't done enough research on the California bill that did pass, you know, because that's what that's the big difference is that the California bill passed. This one is just proposed. Mm. I think what makes headlines of this one is that it's proposed to just pay them, you know, yeah. split the fifteen percent share of annual revenue to everyone. Um, another aspect of this is that, you know, all of a sudden you're going to want to go. I mean, Texas is the number one. Texas, Texas A&M, Ohio State, Michigan, and Alabama are the top five schools in in revenue. You know, Texas and Texas A&M haven't been in a college football playoff yet. Michigan mm-hmm. hasn't. But all of a sudden, quarterbacks might be saying, you know, well, if I'm getting a cut of 15%, why go to Auburn or LSU that make $140 million a year right. when Texas makes $219 million a year? And that 15% share is going to be a lot fatter, and therefore my paycheck is going to be a lot bigger if I'm the starting quarterback for Texas rather than Alabama. I mean, Texas makes almost $40 million more than Alabama in total revenue. That's crazy. It is It is crazy. Uh, I think, I mean, it's kind of like Brandon alluded to, like, you have to make it more off, like, their jersey sales or something like that because, right. like, the, the just flat 15% is just, that's crazy mm-hmm. like I, and it nathan you talked about it, like with volleyball and with like the actual like players their different roles on the roster i think it's because then if you're say you're to a at alabama like your jersey's selling a lot more than that place kicker or that backup guard like and you're getting that compensation that you probably feel that you deserve instead of that flat 15 percent rate but and then that kind of that kind of i guess solves the you know the Texas versus Alabama or wherever, right? Point two, mm-hmm. a little bit at least. I think that one's way safer. Yeah, I would but do we know? With, I'm sorry, yeah. Alex, but do we know for sure that California's was only off your like, based on how many jerseys you sell or whatever? Do we know that it isn't the same thing? I can text the stat department. All right, right I don't know if that one. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, no, I was gonna. I I I would agree with all you guys. Where I think it'd be best to sort of divide up the money depending on, you know, who the athlete is. You know, if if you're the star player, if you're bringing in, you know, the school's money, then, hey, you kind of have a right to a little bit more cash because you're earning it. And then I also think, too, just competition-wise, you know, that may create – I don't want to say create. It creates competition in the sense – and I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I said I don't want to say create, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um you know, for athletes that may not, you know, make the school money, they're just like, oh, okay, I see that. Hey, if I make this school's money, then I'm going to get some extra money. So, therefore, you know, I'm going to go out and ball like Tula, Tula, Tua, <laughs> words are hard, and, you know, try to get, you know, some of that cash that I feel like I deserve if I work hard enough for it, just kind of like how it is in life. If you work hard, you know, you, you get paid an extra money. You get that little bonus if you do well. So in that in that sense, I think it'd be best to roll with that instead of the fifteen percent. Which in hindsight, it sounds it sounds nice because everybody's getting paid evenly, which is fine. Like you know, no one's getting paid more, no one's getting paid less. But at the same time, too, you look at it, it's like okay, here's Joel Schmo who doesn't do anything on this team, and he's getting paid the same amount of money as me. Where whereas I'm going out there on, on the court, on the field, you know, every day, you know, putting my body on the line, and I'm not getting paid more than 
than he or she is. So it's like you said, Nathan, there's just so many layers to it that there is no right answer. But I think just the fact that these bills are getting proposed and they're getting passed, I think is the first step to try to at least find some type of solution. I think that statewide, you know, at the state level with legislature being, you know, proposed is a great way to sort of let national legislation, you know, for the, for the lawmakers of, you know, the entire nation to, for, for them to figure out like, Hey, listen, people are talking about this. This eventually is going to be, you know, you know there's going to be so many different discrepancies all across, you know, wherever. And then that's going to kind of create this unbalance. Not that they really necessarily care about sports, but also, I mean, you know, college revenue and whatnot that just sort of setting that alarm off in their heads and saying, you know, people are talking about this. There is going to be a day that college athletes are going to be compensated in a way that is better than the way that it is done right now. Why not have sort of, you know, the big minds of the world sit down and figure out not the, the world of the nation, figure out, you know, what it is. And what, where the line needs to be drawn and where sort of the, the athletes fit in this whole, you know, money operation that is the NCAA and, and, and college athletics. I, you know, it's, it's, it's so hard. I mean, as, as we've said over and over again, finding that right middle ground, no matter what the eventual outcome of any of this is, there's going to be people on either side that say it's unfair, that say it's, you know, not warranted, that don't agree with the way that it's getting done. So it's it's hard. It's 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 not a situation that you can please everybody. So it's going to be tough. I'm I'm looking right now. I'm I'm trying to figure out what it, like there's been so many articles written about the California bill that I can't sort of like sift through them and find exactly what um is going on. A, a lot of what I'm reading is that it's very beneficial for for um, female athletes That's because yeah. because they're they're making it very evident that mm -hmm. you know they're not trying to separate sort of the way that the money is distributed by right. by gender. I think under the California bill too, athletes can hire agents, you know, all that sponsorship deals and all that through the California deal as well. I think that's another aspect to it that's, I don't know, just kind of interesting, mm -hmm. I guess. From what I see, quote, which would require large public and private universities in the state to let student athletes accept compensation for use of their names, likenesses, and images. So it sounds to me that it's requiring the universities to let the student athletes accept compensation. Right. Mm -hmm. So they don't. The school doesn't necessarily have to pay the athletes, but so the, the two athletes have a right to. The two biggest differences between the New York and the California is that the New York is saying that the school coming from the athletic department's revenue mm -hmm. will go to the student athlete, mm -hmm. whereas in California, the jersey sales, the advertisements, the other things that right. you know that that universities traditionally you know, make money off of names, likenesses, and images, student athletes would then be getting compensated for, which would then turn into, you know, the starting quarterback of USC doing, doing, you know, promos for, you know, local California pizza places. No and just, just all, just all the sorts of different stuff that they would be able to do because, you know, they're going to be on, you know, mm -hmm. ESPN this week, Justin Herbert, you know, of Oregon in the Pac-12, like, like a, a guy like that, that like right. has like the name recognition. Cause I can't think of really anybody on like USC or, UCLA or Stanford right. right now, like that really stands out. But you know, Justin Herbert's like, you know, supposedly the number one quarterback coming out of this year, coming into this year's draft. So I don't know. There's a lot to digest. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot to still happen. There, you know, this right. is this has just been proposed in New York, and I don't think that this is going to be the last time in this semester that we see something like this. Happen. I'm surprised it happened so fast because we were talking about it even when we first talked about the California bill that like we were saying, all right, who's going to be the next school? Who's going to be the yeah. next state to pick mm -hmm. it up? Like it's a domino effect. I expected it like a month from now, like yeah, two right. months from now. I didn't expect it a week later. That's yeah, surprising. Mm -hmm. I think I thought it was going to be like more like how the legalization of marijuana is going, where it's like state by state. Like, but over years, like we first saw the first couple states like that, like what seven, eight years ago, and now like it's not even half the states, and like it's moving. Like that's how I thought it was going to be. But if it continues like this, um, I don't know. We'll maybe college, all college athletes will be getting paid in like four or five years, which would be that'd be nice. Yeah. yeah, we'll 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 see how the ball rolls and and how sort of the the college athlete money tree cookie crumbles. So, you know, it'll be it'll be something to watch. I think that it's, I think that seeing this getting done so quickly is worth noting that states might start to take you know quick action mm -hmm. on this, and mm -hmm. especially you know now that New York and California, sort of the two most populous states, you know, have done it. You don't you don't want the revenue to just fly to them the same way that it you know it. 
it does sort of like New York and LA, the two right. most populous cities. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Um, we're going to take our second break. And uh, when we come back, uh, we're going to finish with doing a little, doing some top fives. We're going to talk a little bit about the NFL and who our, uh, our top fives are at different positions. Um, so yeah, stick with us and we'll be right back. And welcome back to Illini Drive on WPGU 1071. This program tonight is brought to you by Headline Music App, a new mobile app for iPhone that lets music fans everywhere discover new songs they love. Headline Music is the fastest way for fans to find new music and for artists to gain the exposure they aren't getting from other places. Artists upload a 30-second clip to Headline Music and let their fans swipe left or right. This lets artists know whether or not someone is feeling their song. For more information, visit their website at www.headlinemusicapp.com. Download Headline Music App on the App Store today. So, there were some injuries with quarterbacks this weekend. Ben Roethlisberger, Drew Brees going down. Drew Brees having surgery. Seems like he's going to be out for around six weeks is what the original report is. They'll know more after the surgery is done. Ben Roethlisberger out for the season with an elbow injury. Two quarterbacks sort of fading away. Could this be it for them? Sort of, you know, it, it, it's getting there. Which begs the question... I'm actually going to go no injury on this. Okay, so so no so if they're injured right now, we're going to count them out of the top five. We're, out of the top five. Yeah, I, 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 I'm I'm ah. so so we're going to get rid of we're going to get rid of. I imagine Breeze is in a lot of ours. So yes. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, so the top five quarterbacks right now, given that Drew Brees, Ben Roethlisberger just got injured. Who are they? All right, let's be honest. Yeah. Ben Roethlisberger ben was wasn't not in my list. In there. <laughs> he wasn't in there. All right, he wasn't on there, but he. And I'm giving him the air also, time. I'd like also like to say that maybe the end of their career. More Ben than Drew. <laughs> at least Drew Brees older. At least Drew could come back this season, though. Yeah, Brees And has older. spent less time in his career with multiple ice packs strapped to him. <laughs> well, at, like, every part true. of his body. Okay. Anyway. This is, this is true. Yeah. But Drew Brees is 41. Who still, are the top? He's still in all of our top five. It's true. Yeah. Well, I'm, there's a 43-year-old that I'm pretty sure is in all of our top fives, That's too. Exactly. True. <laughs> so let's start. Uh, I'm going to start with Brendan. Give us your top five quarterbacks playing in the NFL Right now, is this in order? By the way, um, it, right, one uh, five, or five, to, to, or five to one, or just no yeah, do 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 it do in order. Right, if it, but we'll this also is, challenge you. This is my order right now. Um, obviously, well, not obviously, but my number one is Pat Mahomes. Um, and this is like my little my list is like based on like skill and like mastery of their own offense. Sure. Um, two is Aaron Rodgers. Um, even though I hate him, I think he's obviously one of the best quarterbacks skill skill wise to ever play the game. Um, three, Tom Brady, um, obviously just because he's mastered his own offense so well that no matter what you do, you, you look at him and even though he, you know, may chip away at, at a team 10 yards at a time, no other quarterback can really do that and be that successful for almost 20 years now. Um, then I have Russell Wilson. I think he's really the only we- reason, um, that the Seahawks have been even relevant and like vying for a playoff spot these past four years, ever since their defense kind of collapsed. Um, I did have Breeze in there before Wilson, um, but now Wilson's my number four. And I think the last one was hard. I was going. That, that's why I kind of kicked Breeze out because I think that the the, the five yeah. is you know the five could be questionable, but now without Breeze, I think it yeah. really makes it tough. If those so five, how I did it was if those top four were off the board, who am I picking? And I think it has to be Deshaun Watson. Okay. Okay. Mm. Younger than I think a lot of other people's. Uh, Fifth guy will end up being, um, but I but I respect I respect where you're going with that. Thank Two you. guys drafted in the same draft class as Mr. Bitch. Okay, Jake. <laughs> I, already, I already told you I'm over this conversation. Jake. Okay, Jake Hassan, your top. Uh, so mine's actually very similar to uh, Brendan's. Number one, I have Rogers, just because I mean he's been doing it longer, and he's just like the game winning drives and the hail marys and like how he never seems to be able to take a solid hit. Like, even when his offensive line is collapsing, same as Brendan. Like, you just have to tip your cap. Like, he's yeah. the best in the league, in my opinion. Second, I have Mahomes. Uh, I mean, he's just continually getting better, and yeah. it's unbelievable. Yeah. Um, I'm a little over the highlight videos of incompletions just because they're no look passes, but whatever. Uh, third, I have Brady as well. It's just crazy. I mean, the man's going to play till he's 50. 
and I'm over it. And he looks like a robot. But with, I'm, I'm actually sick of his Instagram videos like that just oh, say yeah. W. Those are so <laughs> weird. It the, makes me so uncomfortable. The Bad Boys for Life video, though, as much as I hate the Patriots, is still the coldest thing yes, ever put on the internet. That was good. But like yeah. this season's ones, they're just weird because it's just him. Yeah. They're uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. They make me very uncomfortable. Uh, fourth, I have Deshaun Watson. Okay. I just, as long as he doesn't have another collapsed lung, which I think is probably very unlikely. He's More gonna, likely given that O-line. Yeah, and they're so <laughs> Still, I mean, how often do you see a collapsed lung in I'm, the NFL? No, no. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm, and then fifth, I have Russell Wilson. Okay. For the same reasons as Brendan. That they would be nowhere without him right now. Okay. All right. Alex, I'm going to go to you. Yeah. So, yeah, I kind of had the same top three. Rodgers, number one. I, I was close to giving it to Mahomes just because – very recently he's played better, but I think just currently when you look at it overall, Aaron Rodgers has just been just killing it since since day one. Yep. So I'll give it to him. Number two, already uh, Patrick Mahomes, he's just putting up dumb numbers that don't make sense, even on Madden. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, number three, that guy named Tom Brady, he's okay. Number four, I rolled with Russell Wilson. And number five, I actually went with Phillip Rivers. Okay. He was close for yeah, me. He was, I he was right went with Philip Rivers. The, the reason Best quarterback to never win a Super Bowl. Yeah, that's why that's what I mean. Just like I sided with him because I was like, okay, similar to, to to Rogers in the sense that, you know, he's been doing he's been doing it, you know, consistently for years. That's where I kinda gave up. He's gave very underrated. Yeah, very underrated. Yeah. So I kinda I snuck him up in there in the top five. But yeah. once again, if we if if we work out an injured players, some guy named yeah. Drew Drew Brees would be it, it would mix it up. So yeah. Um also, we should say that Luck would have been in our top five. If he would have been oh, in mine, yeah. yeah, he would have been, been in mine. mine. He would have been would my top been... three, probably. Wow, he, no, I think he would have been just. Out he, top three. I think he would have been just. Out. Yeah, I think he'd be like six for me. You think you still take Philip Rivers over Andrew Luck? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I respect. I respect yeah. that take. Yep. Yep. Um. So similar to everybody, but Brendan's. I have Rogers first. I think I've said it before. I think he's the most talented quarterback of all time. Mm. Is he the goat? No. Tom Brady's the goat. Tom Brady is my number two. The only reason that I put him over Mahomes is because Brady has been doing it for what is it now, eighteen years, yeah. something something like that. I mean, he he doesn't put up the numbers or anything, but he just wins, baby. Yeah. He he just yeah. wins, he, it, no matter what it is, you know. And then and you can and you can give that like whole you know his division's been garbage the whole time and the Tuck Rule game and the you know Falcons collapse and the, the, the you know Russell Wilson throwing on the one yard line like all the excuses that you can try to give. Tom Brady doesn't care. He just wins. He's got. Six or six rings, etc. Patrick Mahomes, number three. Like you said, stupid numbers. Guy, it's just hard to imagine that any of this could have been done by a second year and now a third year player until Patrick Mahomes came into the league and as as what felt like a rookie because he only played two years the year before lit the whole league up. Number four, Russell Wilson. I think similar to Tom Brady, he's a he's a running quarterback version of just winning. He doesn't put up the ridiculous numbers, but. He gets the job done. He, you know, people forget how elusive and athletic he is. And I, I think that he's an animal. Um, number five was really tough for me because I'm looking at the options with Philip Rivers, Matt Ryan. Part of me wanted to put Baker Mayfield up there. Oh, part God. of me, want, part of me, want, part of me wanted to say Carson Wentz because I still believe he, Carson he was w- close for me too. I agree. I think Carson yeah. Wentz, if he can just stay healthy, yeah, right, that's, he can that's make that's it in the top what, five. Yeah. So I'm riding Matt Ryan. Which I, which a lot of people are going to disagree with. The thing that I think has you know hurt Matt Ryan is his in his his for some reason lack of want to target Julio Jones in the end zone. Matt Ryan and and the Falcons you know just find ways to just not be as good as they should be, Agreed. which I think is a big knock against him. But also, I mean, if I was sitting there and I'm you know playing pickup and I have these I have Rivers Ryan. Baker and Wentz to pick from as the quarterbacks because I think those are the four that I was sort of in consideration. Baker, not so much. But I think that pure quarterbacking, I'm taking Matt Ryan. I think that he really, really can sling the rock all the way around. I think that if he got, you know, if he found a way to get Julio Jones out of double coverages more often and whatnot, he they'd be more successful. And I, I, I don't know what's holding the Falcons back, but I don't think it's Matt Ryan. And I think Matt Ryan's career is getting sort of compressed because of it. So... That's my take. That's fair. You know, all, all of us sort of rock with a little bit of different look at the five, but, um, you know, that's why we do top fives, and that's why we're, you know, we all agree to disagree. So, 
Thank you very much to everybody for listening to today's Wednesday show. Um, make sure to tune in on Tuesday, you know, to the Tuesday Thursday crew tomorrow. We'll have Alec, we'll have Eric, we'll have JJ, and we'll have Gabby running the board. Uh, should be a lot of fun. They'll give some more preview to Illinois and Nebraska. Talk about maybe Thursday night football. Um, so yeah, make sure to tune into that. So. And on behalf of Alex, Brendan, Jake, and myself, thank you very much for listening to Illini Drive. Alex, hit the music.